So then guys, you might at the moment own a MacBook right now and you're looking to potentially buy yourself one of the brand new M3 families of MacBooks, but you just don't know which one to buy. And also, let's say you own yourself, say, an M2 family or an M1 family, whether this would be an M2 Pro or an M1 Max, you know, depending on all of that, you're probably looking to see, should I be even upgrading or even consider upgrading right now? Well, what I've done here is created a chart. Now, just very recently, I did make another video where I had a different chart in it, and this was to do with working professions to see kind of what working profession, you know, what laptop or MacBook you should be picking for your working profession. So if you want to find out more information about that one, make sure that you do check out that video on this channel because it was only made just very, very recently. So yeah, do check that out. So then guys, have you ever been in that situation where you've got your main computer at home and you need to say access an app what's exclusively on your computer at home maybe because of licenses or things like this or let's say for example there's a file on here and you need to move it over to say your macbook well look no further than supremo supremo is a fantastic app that can bridge all your devices together no matter if it's a mac pc iphone or android phone what is awesome is that you don't need any technical knowledge or any configuration to set up Supremo. It just works. You can securely access your devices and complete day-to-day -day tasks. Like I love the power of my Mac Studio for video editing and I can fully utilize that power like I even have here with my M1 MacBook Pro. Not only this, if I find a picture or music that I want to transfer to my Mac, I can do this really easily on the go. And the best thing of all, guys, it's totally free for personal use. And there's some really great competitive prices for professional use with the licenses too. So if you want to check out Supremo and link all of your devices together and bridge them to remote onto, make sure you check out the link that's in the description of this video right now. And with that, it's back to the main video. But without further ado, though, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about then of, you know, which M3 MacBook Air or, you know, the M3 MacBook Pro or the M3 chip, the M3 Pro or the M3 Max chip or in which MacBook you should be picking in 2024 if you're doing an upgrade. And with that, let's get started. So the first thing I'd like to point out here, number five on this chart, as you can see here, actually means top priority and whereas number one means a low priority so if you've got a number five it's highly recommended to get your macbook sorted if it's a low priority then you probably don't need to get it sorted anytime soon so first of all what we're going to start with we're going to start with the pre-2020 intel macbooks now the main reason why these ones i'm going to do first of all and why i put it as 2017 is because the latest version of mac os sonoma uh is the you know the minimum requirement is mainly 2017 machines and above and because of of that that means that any macbooks below that or older than that age means that apple not really rolling out any updates there's the odd security patch and i'm going to say that the odd one but they're really not doing anything especially the more older your macbook is getting so for example a 2016 macbook might be getting about three or four updates a year with the odd security patch where say a 2012 one probably not going to get any going forwards at the moment so this is why you know i would highly recommend that you get these upgraded because also it's also a hacker's paradise out there they know that Apple don't support older machines anymore. So with that, they're going, cool. That means they're not going to patch anything anytime soon. So we can hack away and do things. This is why I'm going to say these ones are going to be high priority, as you're about to see. So starting out with them, any pre-2017 MacBook Air that you have, I would say it's a high priority. And it goes into the number five here. Top priority of getting yourself a MacBook Air M3 if you're looking to upgrade to the latest and greatest MacBook out there. I would say this is where you probably sit right now. Then also, if you've got a MacBook Pro that predates 2017, it's the same sort of thing. Now, I think this one depends. I'm going to say it kind of sits a quarter into the MacBook Air category and three quarters into the MacBook Pro. Because we do have some people out there who actually use their MacBook Pro, kind of like a MacBook Air. You know, they've got the machine. It's got a bit more power in it, but they're not really utilizing ports. The fan never really speeds up or anything. They're not really doing any 4K editing. So, yeah, it might fit in that 
you know, a bit of the MacBook Air might be fine for you, but if you are going to be doing some sort of basic editing and things like this, then yeah, I would be saying getting yourself a MacBook Pro M3. If you are going to be fiddling around with 4K videos, you know, Photoshop, things like this, um, a bit more regular than say 20 minutes at a time, yeah, I would be going into that category there. Next of all, what we have then is the pre-2020 Intel MacBooks. Now, with this one, again, I would say if you've got a MacBook Air which predates 2020, you probably got about another year or so of updates or 18 months of updates. It's not a huge priority to upgrade, but you will find the difference there, especially that Apple have recently claimed, as you can see right here, that it is, you know, an M3 is 13 times faster than what you've got with the 2020 MacBook Air. So if you've got, say, a 2018 MacBook Air, yeah, it's going to be even faster than that. Now, with that, then, I would say it sits in this category here because you're going to go get basically the same amount of ports. In fact, you actually get an extra port. You actually get the MagSafe port. So, you know, you're not going to be really missing anything there whatsoever. So you get the latest and greatest in that one. So I'm going to stick it there. The same with the 13 inch MacBook Pro. What I'm going to actually say with this one as well, I'm actually going to stick it as well slightly into the MacBook Air category again, only a quarter. Main reason is again, is because, you know, this 13 inch MacBook Pro, if you had one, you've either got two USB-C ports, or if you're very lucky and spent out a bit more money back then, you've got four. And yeah, you're not really going to miss out on those ports. You're going to get the same amount of ports as a MacBook Air. But if you do want that bit of extra room, a bit more flexibility, that like I did say before, if you're going to do more than, say, 20 minutes of editing um, at a time or half an hour of editing and the fans starting to whir in and things like this, you might be better off with a MacBook Pro M3 and also with those extra ports if you're doing some light editing there. Now, the next machine, what I'm going to say is, is the pre is the now, the next MacBook we're going to talk about is the 2018 and 2019 sort of MacBook Pros that came out. These were the last of the Intels, as I called it, of the big guns, as it were. And they're still quite powerful today, to be deadly honest. Now, with this one, what I'm going to say is if you own one of these machines and you just want a little more power than what you've got right now, personally, what I would be saying is I would be sitting kind of on the fence here of kind of being a three or four with getting an M3 Pro. Now, you're probably going, why not an M3 Max? Now, the thing is, if you are happy with the power that you have right now, um, you know, your videos are exporting okay, you could do it just a bit more faster. I can tell you now, an M3 Pro will wipe the floor for you. It'll be no problems whatsoever if you changed into this machine. Obviously, if you've got E7 M3 Max, oh yeah, it'd be even better. But I'm just trying to help you here in saving money and things like this. So, yeah, this is where I would stick it. Now, I put it in a 4 and 3 category because I do believe that Apple probably are going to give it at least another two years of updates on this machine, mainly because of the power it had in them. Someone had i9 chipsets, i7 chipsets inside of these and also had dedicated graphics and they were quite powerful for what they were at the time and they kind of match, you know, the 2019 MacBook here matches in power similar to a normal M1 chipset. So I can't really see Apple retiring this anytime in the next, say, two years personally i think we've got at least another two years of mac os for this machine so with that i'm going to say it sits about here about four or three middle sort of category but i'd say m3 pro is your best bet now with that out of the way let's now talk about the m1 macbook family now this one is a bit of a tricky one and i probably say it's the most trickiest of them all because it depends on what type of user you are going for and if you need a bit more power now i'm going to say this the m1 family is more than enough for, I'm gonna say even say 95% of you guys out there, if you got one, you do not need to upgrade anytime soon. So it's gonna be quite low down in this list. So starting out then with the M1 MacBook Air, if you were going to upgrade it, I would say do not even bother getting another MacBook Air. There's no point. You know, you're going to get MagSafe and all of this. If you are going to be upgrading, you're probably wanting a better screen, a bit more better battery life, better ports, things like this. Then, yeah, and a bit more power. Maybe, I would say, than getting yourself the MacBook Pro M3 is probably a better bet for you there. So, you know, standard M3, getting the better screen, better resolution, all of that kind of good stuff. So I'm going to stick it there. But as you can see here, it is quite low down the list. It's not a high priority, but if you were looking for just a bit more power and you wanted a better screen, you have more ports, 
yeah, this is where I put it. And the same here with the M1 MacBook Pro 2. So this is the one that had a very similar design to like the 2016 MacBook Intels all the way along. So again, I'm going to say that if you were going to be upgrading this M1 uh, model, you're probably wanting those ports more than anything on the better screen because it is very similar to the MacBook Air. And the only main difference is it's got the touch bar, which doesn't exist anymore in the newer Mac M3 family. And also it's got the fan. That's probably the main key difference here so with that one then i would actually say then you'll probably want to see that better screen better ports all of that good stuff i'm going to stick it in the fence here so it could be that you could be wanting just an m3 you know just want a bit more power in that sense or maybe that you are going to be wanting more power you brought a macbook pro i wanted the power i need it now so yeah i'm going to sit it halfway in the fence here between a macbook pro m3 and a macbook pro m3 pro you know apple you could have made this easier to say i can tell you that now but yeah that is where i would stick this one right now now the next one what i'm going to say is then is the 14 inch m1 pro macbook pro like i said it's a mouthful to say isn't it so where can we stick this then? So I would personally say it's the same sort of idea again. If you have got this machine, you are most likely going to be wanting a M3 Max probably, you know, there's no point really upgrading to the M3 Pro really. You are gonna see an increase in power, it's just not worth the money. But if you do wanna really desperately do that, you can do that. So that's what I'm seeking about a quarter into the M3 Pro sort of area here, but you're more in favor of getting that M3 Max. So that is where I'm going to put that right now. And it's the same then with the 16 inch, um, or even say a M3 or well, M1 Max MacBook Pro, if you've got 14 or you've got a 16 inch, I'm gonna stick it right here between a two and a one sort of priority there, because it's really kind of a, I can't really explain this, but that you just don't need to upgrade anytime soon with the M1 Max. If you have an M1 Max, you really do not need to upgrade to an M3 Max anytime soon. Yes, it does have more power, but what you'll see is, as we've seen on benchmarks, you do save some time, say maybe in rendering and things like this. Um, but generally speaking, from an upgrade kind of point of view, I just cannot see a big really need to do that. The only one scenario I'd say where you may see it is you're doing graphics. So if you are doing a lot of graphics kind of work, 3D graphics, you know, kind of work like that, where we've got this new ray tracing ability, you might be one of those kind of, you know, people where it could potentially an M3 Max would be better beneficial for you and it might be worth upgrading from an M1 Max or an M1 Pro for that reason but I would say it's only for that reason but generally majority of people I'm sticking it here I'm afraid that's where my opinion sits with that one the next one then is the M2 family and this M2 family at the time making this video is only about a year old just over a year old so you know for especially the M2 Pro and the M2 Max you know the M2 normal came out about 18 months ago now but point is same thing m2 macbook air you've got right now it's no point upgrading it it's like the same model it's the same design the only difference is that you can close your screen down you know and then use it like a kind of like a mac mini um so you can use two displays at the same time it's just not worth it i'd get myself a dock instead what can do that There's some docks out there be far cheaper to do that so with that then guys i'm going to stick it right down in this corner down here i would not be upgrading to an m3 macbook air anytime soon so yeah uh, in fact actually i'm going to change my mind the only thing i would say is and if you've only had it for a year or so i'm actually going to change my mind actually i'm going to stick it here the bottom of the macbook pro m3 instead because the same sort of thing that you just don't need to have another MacBook air you might need a macbook pro m3 because you might need you know there's additional screens and things like that so yeah now thinking about it yeah actually i'm going to stick it here so but it's going to be in the corner down here because you're not really going to see too much more power if you're going to do that but yeah maybe the ports maybe the better screen that's the only reason why you might be wanting to upgrade but personally I would really do it. It's going to be a very low priority. Same here with the M2 MacBook Pro. It's very similar to like the M1 MacBook Pro. It was the same design. It was the one with the touch bar and everything like that. So again, I'm going to move you to just here in between. Maybe the same sort of reasons. You might need a bit more power and things like this, but you're really not going to see much more in an M3 or an M3 Pro. In fact, I'm actually going to say, you know, it's going to be so minimal. 
you're going to be going, why did I waste my money on spending just that little bit more? Have you ever had that feeling where you've got an iPhone from this, you know, from last year, and then you get the exact same model this year, and really you don't notice too much? You've got those one or two extra features, but then you realize, oh gosh, I spent this money, and the only reason why you've done it mainly is because to go, oh, look at me, I've got the latest and greatest iPhone. That is it. That's the kind of feeling you're going to get here if you did this kind of upgrade. You're not really going to notice too much there. The next model then is the M2 Pro 14 or 16 MacBook Pro. Same thing like last time. I'm going to stick it here. It might hover maybe into the M3 Pro area, mainly because of that graphics ability maybe. You might need that ray tracing. That's probably it. But mainly I'm going to say you'd be going for an M3 Max. But look how low it is down this list. It's nowhere near the top. It's right down the bottom it's very unlikely you're going to need to upgrade and the same here with the m2 max chipset i'm going to stick it right down in this corner down here there's really no need to upgrade this machine whatsoever if you do want to get that graphics that is it like i said 3d graphics that is it it's the only thing not 3d rendering in kind of like a final cut pro or anything like that no nope. m2 if you're on m2 max right now absolutely fine for that no point doing this upgrade it's going to cost you more money than it's worth it's not worth doing the upgrade anytime soon so i'm going to leave it there and with that guys that is the chart so this like i said is my own opinions here on this chart of where i think you know if you're going doing an upgrade right now where you should be i think the key priority is here that if you are on an intel machine you can see here that you are up here and you can also see here funny enough with all the m1 and the m2 family it's all down at the other end of the scale right down here so yeah i think you're getting the idea here intel's look into upgrading if you've got an m1 or m2 really not much point really doing any upgrades anytime soon unless you just want that nice new screen that feeling of going oh i've got the latest macbook that is about it really and there we have it guys that is my recommendation of priority now i have said this before this is my own recommendations because at the end of the day this is what i would do and this is what i would say to people if people are saying i've got this type of macbook should i be upgrading or should i not and this would be my own suggestion it doesn't mean that these suggestions are right or wrong in any way but this is my own opinion here but if you have enjoyed watching this video please make sure you do press the like button and also at the same time if you want to hear the latest apple news reviews and comparisons please also also make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell until next time guys i'll see you really soon take care bye bye